folks, Kevin here. How you doing today? I'm still doing okay. The weather is still pretty frumpy outside. Lots of rain uh, lately, uh, but we'll deal with it. So one of the videos that recently posted with my slow soil building technique using cardboard paper and leaving the plastic tape on it, leaving all of the envelope plastic pieces there, uh, stimulated a little bit of interest and Joan uh, uh, made a comment and asked a question and uh, she had been using cardboard uh, well cardboard and paper for doing the vermicomposting that's using red wiggler worms to go ahead and break down old food scraps and all and I'll post a video about that at some point in the future because I think there's a lot that we can do with it and even we can take you know, animal feces and put those and our own feces and have to do vermicomposting with it. And that those, those worms, those red wigglers can actually destroy the pathogens in our feces. But, but they can't destroy the weed seeds in there. So, uh, but that's another, a topic for another day. But Joan had asked, you know, uh, she was a bit concerned about some of the plastic, uh, I'm going to call it plastic visors or plastic components and envelopes and the chickens getting at them. Well, uh, I think that the chickens will probably peck at just about anything. Anything, anything that, that looks shiny at all. Uh, would have I witnessed the ch chickens uh, pecking at? Well, in one of my videos, um, when I was building the, uh, ch the chicken coop work area and the greenhouse area, you can see I had a Premier One fence all around the building during the construction phase. And the main reason that I had that around there was because I used insulated concrete forms, which are uh, a styrofoam product. Well, chickens will eat styrofoam like it's candy. Uh, if there's fruits and vegetables next to them and there's a st styrofoam there, there's a 50-50 chance that they're going to go after the styrofoam. I've seen them eat uh, polyisocyanurate, that uh, uh, closed cell uh, insulation board. I've seen them uh, consume the blue uh, insulation form, Dow Board is one of the companies that make it. And they'll, they'll consume the pink insulation board. They will peck at just about anything under the sun. Now I've actually looked and watched closely when I've caught them doing it to see is there anything in their feces and for some somehow they're able to break that down where it's not detectable in their stool so I wouldn't put it past chickens to eat just about anything Joan also mentioned that uh, the worms doing the work with a lot of the composting and I and I think that uh, with the cardboard and all and all the lignin uh, components and cellulose in these materials and these are carbohydrate polymers and all uh, that it's actually the fungi that actually do that first step to break things down now if you tear things up into small enough pieces I think earthworms certainly can consume some of it even red wigglers if it gets small enough <clears throat> inside of worms they're uh, well I, I guess the way I would look at it, if you refer back to one of my soil uh, talks and I'll put a link I guess up there. Uh, I talk about the uh, succession of plants that, that, that actually, you know, bacterial dominated soil for weeds and then we get to a full food forest uh, to a full woodland developed redwood area and it's predominantly fungal dominated in, in, in that setting. And we talked about in that video starting with just simple bacteria and then we get some fungi in there and the protozoa consume the bacteria. Then we get some uh, fungal consuming nematodes. These are all microscopic and some uh, bac uh, uh, I'm sorry, bacteria consuming nematodes as well. And we go up this, I guess food chain is the best way to describe it, in the soil structure. And, at, and the greater the surface area, in other words, the smaller the particles are, the more easily that everything can be broken down quickly. And in the video that I recently produced, you know that I, I really stacked, you know, 
you know, a couple of feet deep of cardboard. Now there was uh, rabbit manure and other materials in the, the bedding from the, for the rabbit manure and there was the edible arrangements, fruits that were predominantly in there as well. And there was leaves that I covered it up with, but I did not inoculate those, those places. And you saw I was able to stick the pitchfork in the ground and you couldn't see any signs of it in most places except for the one area that wasn't covered adequately and you could see some tape pieces there. But that whole area, it disappeared. Now the earthworms probably did bring a lot of the, the, the material down into the A horizon. So all of that organic material that was detectable as its, it, as its intact structure certainly was easily identifiable and that's the organic material on the very surface of the soil. The, the uh, fungi came in and started working its way in from the edges and maybe in between the sheets of the cardboard. They started breaking things down. The small little nematodes, microscopic nematodes, it started eating some of the fungi as well. That all happened. And I don't want to go over that too much more, but I think that's the, the process that actually goes on. But how did I get this idea about all the, the, the fungi going on? Years ago, I picked up shotgun shells that were in a waste pile that was, you know, that obviously fungi had, had gone into, all the paper products had disappeared, and I could see some of the shotgun shell plastics, and that pretty tough stuff was actually dissolved and, and broken away. One of the signs, the posted signs, was put over a, uh, oh, lichens on, on a tree, and I could see where that was dissolved. Now, a lichen is really a a uh, two main organism groups, algae and, and fungi, working together. And I don't know how that, that actually happened, but it looked like that was consumed some. Then I could see places where milk jugs were broken down as well. So, and, and I don't have a large chemistry background. I have a minor. I needed one more class to make it a dual major from undergrad. But I'm very interested in chemistry. As you go on and get more advanced in, in internal medicine, chemistry, uh, biochemistry becomes a big significant part of your life if you really want to, you know, go further with this. So when we're talking about chemotherapy and all the drug interactions and so on. So I have a, a profound interest in chemistry. And then I've seen some Peter McCoy taking, uh, taking cigarette butts, and I think those are polyesters, uh, uh, I know it, at times there was actually asbestos in cigarette butts, but he, he got fungi to start breaking that down. I know that Paul Stamets has showed that he's broken down oil, uh, crude oil that's been spilled with fungi as well. Um, so there's lots of places where I've seen this done. There's actually, I, I go in, uh, and and one of the judges for what's called the Genius Olympiad, it's SUNY Oswego, about every t other year I go down and am one of the judges and you have these young kids from all over the world that come in and do their various projects. And these are the sorts of things that, that these kids are doing nowadays. They're actually going ahead and finding fungi. And I'm, during the time that I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of screens. I'm going to try and cover up me and show a couple of screens where, uh, where we're actually looking at some uh, white rot fungi, fungi that actually is capable of breaking down some of these polystyrenes. And if you search some of these plastics and what they actually are and look at their chemical structures, you see these complex carbohydrate uh, carbon-based unit systems that are not that dissimilar to other organ uh, um, not uh, synthesized organic compounds. So, so I think it's possible. We have to step out of the, the, uh, the enclosure where we think that these plastics, we can't deal with them and we can't break them down. And we ha otherwise, we'd still think the earth is flat or we think we'd never be able to make it to the moon or all the other things that, that have happened or that we could communicate wirelessly. All of the things that we're doing this day or that we could have a computer that could fit in your pocket. So we need to think out of the box when it comes to bioremediating all of these things that we've created and we put all over in our oceans and all. And that's the thing I want to do is get people who aren't necessarily full scientists to do little projects and all and collaborate. And ultimately I, I want to get interns from uni local universities. My wife and I, when we had that 
the, the corporation before dealing with wildlife, we had internship programs from various places. I want to do the same sort of thing and see can we see and get some papers uh, published regarding some of this bioremediation pro projects. As I mentioned before, Peter McCoy, Paul Stamets, both of these people have done, done a lot of work. I, th I really uh, am a big fan of what Peter McCoy is doing. Now, I've never been to one of his workshops, one of the radical mycology workshops, and I haven't purchased his book, but the man is amazing. So I do a Google search if you're interested in this sort of thing, Peter McCoy, cigarette filters, that sort of thing. Uh, and certainly do some research with these plastics and see. Uh, there's so many different forms of these plastics. I think there's probably 13 different forms of the plastics that we use all the time. But even these, I'm going to call them milk containers, they're cardboard and plastic put together, or some of them are cardboard and wax. They actually get broken down as well. You see that little plastic ring where the cap screws onto, that's left afterwards. But we just have to get the right microorganisms to, to inoculate these areas and then propagate those same organisms. And they're temperature dependent, moisture dependent, There's, there are multiple factors. And I've had success and it was, you know, I stumbled onto the success. I didn't know that this was actually going to work. And, and I didn't know that the one spot near the surface, there would still be the tape. But all the rest of the area, no tape in the area, that, and I'm referring to the beginning of that video. So a cat is hungry now, so I must go. Well, thanks so much for the comment and really asking good questions. These are amazing. I'm excited about interacting with the community and seeing what can we do together. Let's try our own little experiments. And if you know some high school kids or whatever, uh, maybe we can get their, them interested in small little projects. And they can end up presenting their projects in an event like Google, uh, not Google Scholar, uh, the Genius Olympiad like SUNY Oswego, State University New York College at Oswego. Yeah, I believe it's in June each year. Uh, they send me a, an email to remind me. Well. If this was a value, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, think about the possibilities. We're limited by our beliefs, and if we believe that something is impossible, you're right. It, you'll never accomplish it. But if you see possibilities, then think outside of the box. Do the research. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.